Welcome to this Getting Started video on Dashboards and Stories. Dashboards are a way to present one or more views, often with filters, legends, and interactivity tying all the views together. Dashboards can include sheets, text, images, and web pages. Stories in Tableau are narrated walkthroughs of one or more sheets or dashboards. For example, leading the audience through a discovery you made as you were analyzing the data. Each viewer dashboard in a story is called a story point. Any view that is brought into a dashboard or story is simply a window to the underlying worksheet. For the most part, changes made on one sheet, whether it's a view or a dashboard, will carry through to the other places that content is in use. Stories have slightly different behavior. To illustrate how changes ripple through the workbook, we'll execute a series of alterations on this simple scatter plot and see where the changes show. Once content has been added to a story, it only tracks changes as long as it has been unmodified on the story. Any changes made to content in a story do not reach back and update the underlying content. Dashboards do reach back and update the underlying content. The details of what we're about to do don't really matter so much as the general understanding of when changes will impact other sheets. First, we'll bring this scatter plot to the dashboard and the story. Go back to the scatter plot and add category to color. Verify the changes reflect on the dashboard and the story. If we're ever on a dashboard or story and we easily want to get back to the specific sheet, it's highlighted on the left and there's a Go to Sheet icon. On the scatter plot, uncheck Technology. Verify that the dashboard and the story change. On the dashboard, we'll uncheck Furniture. This should carry through, and the story and the scatter plot are only orange. On the story, we'll retick Technology. Now, because this is a story, we should see that the dashboard and the scatter plot did not change. Modifying the story's filter doesn't make changes anywhere else, unlike on the dashboard. Here in the scatter plot, we'll recheck furniture. The dashboard should match, but the story won't. Once we've modified the story's filter, the view no longer tracks filter changes that were made elsewhere. On the scatter plot, add market to shape. Verify that the dashboard and story have those shapes. We hadn't modified the shape on the story, so it continues to track those changes from the scatter plot. As we can see, there's a great deal of interplay between the sheets. Once again, for the most part, changes made on one piece of content, whether it's a view or dashboard, will carry through to the other places that content is in use. But if it's been added to a story, the changes are only tracked so long as it is unmodified on the story. Duplicating sheets for use in dashboards and stories can be useful if a view is used in multiple places and we want to maintain control of any changes. To duplicate a sheet, right click on the Sheet tab and select Duplicate. We could now use a separate copy on the story and the dashboard. If the finished dashboard or story is the main purpose of the workbook, it can be a best practice to hide all the other content so it doesn't distract from the main goal. Right-click on a Sheet tab and select Hide Sheet. To hide a sheet, it must be in use either in a dashboard or story, or the option will not be available. This is because if the sheet isn't used somewhere, there'd be no way to get it back once it was hidden. If modifications need to be made on a hidden sheet, go to the dashboard or story where that sheet is in use, and from the list of available views, either click on the Go to Sheet icon, this will temporarily bring up the sheet, and clicking off it will hide it again, or right-click and unhide the sheet right here. Dashboards can be created by clicking on the Dashboard tab here at the bottom. The workspace for a dashboard looks a little different than the workspace for a sheet. For one, the data pane is replaced by the dashboard pane. Instead of listing the dimensions and measures from the data source, 
we have a list of sheets in the workbook. Hovering will bring up a preview. It's very important to consider the destination of a dashboard from the beginning. In the size area, we have three main options, fixed size, automatic, and range. Fixed size offers us a list of preset dimensions or the ability to set our own custom size. If we select range, we can set the boundaries for how large or small the dashboard can grow or shrink. Automatic allows the dashboard to fill the available area. There's also the option above to turn on device preview. For more information on this feature, check out the video on Device Designer. A lot of effort goes into designing the layout and visual of a dashboard. You can save headache and time by considering things like size and devices from the beginning. Adding views to a dashboard is very easy. Just like we drag fields into a view, we can drag views onto a dashboard. Any related legends will also come out, like the color legend on the right, unless they've been hidden on the original sheet. The first view will automatically take up the whole dashboard. Any subsequent views, though, can be placed in specific areas of the screen. Holding down the mouse button as we move our mouse around the dashboard shows gray areas indicating where this view will be placed when we let go. If we bring it all the way to the very bottom, it will fill across the entire width, including the side panel with legends. Speaking of legends, we can see that highlighting works across all sheets relevant to that color legend. Now that these two sheets have been added to the dashboard, note that they have checks next to their name in the dashboard pane. This indicates they're in use. In the objects area, we see options for things like layout containers and text boxes. All of these can be dragged into the dashboard just like a view. For more information, see the video on dashboard layouts and formatting. We can use this checkbox to toggle the dashboard's title on and off. Double-clicking on a title, either for the dashboard or sheet, brings up the text editor. Notice that here, our bar chart has a scroll bar. The size of the chart on the sheet is larger than the area we've given it on the dashboard. It's better to see the entire view, so let's adjust the dashboard to remove the scroll bars. First, we can simply click at the top of the view and drag it up. This will resize the running total view and make the bottom view larger. But we can also click into the bar chart and in the menu drop-down in the header, select Fit, Entire View. This menu has a lot of options. We'll go over many in the course of the dashboard videos, but I recommend exploring what's available. For example, turning the title on and off. Dashboards are all about interactivity. Let's bring out another sheet. Just like with fields, we can double-click sheets to bring them out. If the default location isn't where we'd like them to end up, we can always rearrange by clicking on the view and using the header. Note that this sheet brought in its color legend and filter. We can click on the color legend and remove it from the dashboard. What if we want to add a filter we don't already have? Let's say we want to be able to filter by ship mode. Click on any view where that filter would be relevant. Click on the menu caret and there's an option for filters. We'll add ship mode. Now the filter is on the dashboard, we can format it just like we can in a view. Let's change it to a single value list. We could add a legend the same way, going to the menu of a sheet and selecting legend, then picking the appropriate field. When we click through a filter, we can see that by default, it only applies to the view it came out with. If we want to make this filter apply to more of the dashboard, we simply open the menu and under Apply to Worksheets, select the appropriate option. In this case, we'll say All Related Data Sources. And we'll do the same thing for the Market Filter. Now when we make a selection, it applies to the whole dashboard, regardless of what data source the view is built from. Similarly, we can make a view act as a filter for the dashboard. Click on the view to bring up the header bar and click the filter icon. 
Now if we select a header, such as second class, all the relevant views are filtered. By default, views and legends pull out into the view as tiled dashboard objects. When we bring out a sheet, the gray drop area covers a region of the canvas. What we're seeing here is tiled behavior. If we click here at the bottom where it says floating, we can change it. Note how the gray drop area indicator looks different, and if we let go, this view and all its legends and filters will come out on top of the view underneath. We can then freeform adjust the size and location. Even with the dashboard set to tiled, we can float individual objects. Let's float the color legend for the map. We can do so from the menu, or if we hold down the shift key and click and drag, this object will float. Tiled layouts automatically fill the entire space. Floating objects can have a custom size and position. With the legend selected, if we click the Layout tab, we're brought to controls for this element. We can make precise adjustments to size and position. Images can be added to dashboards simply by dragging out the image object and navigating to the location of the image. By going to the menu, we can fit the image, center it, and even set a URL. If we want to add a web page, we simply bring out the web page part, and I can drop it here at the bottom. For the URL, I'll put in tableau.com. Simply dragging on the top lets us resize this. And it's still fully interactive, just like in a browser. Notice that the logo resized dynamically as we adjusted the layout below, because we chose to fit the size. However, if we want to move the logo to the left, there's no left align option, just centering. Instead, we can bring out a blank object and position it to the right, and then adjust it to where the logo is where we want it to be. This is, of course, redundant with the web page. Layout containers are a great way to control placement on a dashboard. We can bring out multiple vizs to a single layout container, and by selecting the container, we can choose to distribute them evenly. But layout containers can do more than that. They can also help with dynamic resizing. Here, when we have a tiled layout, note that if we click to a specific ship mode, the bar chart is a static size, but more or fewer bars are squeezed into the same area. Let's go to a blank dashboard and bring out a vertical layout container. We'll bring out running total, and below it, shipping cost and we'll bring out a filter for ship mode. Now let's see how layout containers handle the resizing of these bars. When the filter is set to all modes, the running total is pretty small up top. But as we deselect modes, the bar chart collapses, and the running total chart automatically fills that space. Good titles are important for effective communication. If we double-click, we can edit a title. The default is the sheet name, but we can replace that with whatever we want. A good trick is to insert a dynamic value into the title. Let's rename this Average Cost 4, and if we click on Insert, we get a list of things that can be added. This depends on what fields are in use in the view. We'll insert ship mode, and then we'll follow up our title with shipping. Now as we play with the ship mode filter, we see the title dynamically change. Speaking of titles, we can format fonts in a dashboard in a couple ways. Just like on a viz, we can right-click on an element and format it directly. The format pane gives us options for fonts. 
As a disclaimer, I'm going to make things pretty ugly over the rest of this video because I want to highlight what's going on. These are not visual best practices. If we want to focus on the dashboard, we can go to the Format menu and select Dashboard. Here we can set the font for the dashboard title, as well as things like text objects. The Format menu also has an option for Workbook. This lets us format fonts and lines across the entire workbook. Note that if I set all here to be Tableau Book, it resets the changes that I made before. This is great for maintaining consistency. But let's go back to the dashboard formatting menu for a moment and discuss shading. Like fonts, shading is controlled at various levels. To start, if we change the dashboard shading, we see that it impacts things like titles, legends, and filters. But the vizs themselves haven't taken the background color. Views have their own formatting. To make the entire dashboard this color, we'd need to go to each view on the dashboard and format their shading. Right-click in a view and select Format. If we go to Shading and pick the same color, we see that that view now matches the rest of the dashboard. We can also control shading from the Layout tab. Down in the Item Hierarchy, We'll expand the layout containers until we get to the vertical one that holds the legends and filters. Layout containers are automatically added by Tableau to control the placement of objects. For information about using layout containers as containers, check out the video on dashboard objects. With this layout container selected, other options in the layout pane become available. We can add a border, set a background color, and control things like padding. If I select something other than the layout container, we can see what has taken the color and border. This can be great for visually distinguishing controls like filters and such. If we select the layout container again, we also see options for outer and inner padding. With that border and shading on, let's see what these can do. If we click to Outer Padding, we can decide if all sides are equal or not and adjust the padding. Note that when we increase this, the bordered and shaded region shrinks and the dashboard color shows around it. We can see the outline of the layout container that's still selected. If we switch to Inner Padding, Let's change just the top padding. Now the space being added is between the border and the filter's title. I've been using a layout container in this example, but we can select any item in the hierarchy and control its padding and position in this way, giving us complete control over each object and therefore the entire dashboard. Dashboard actions are powerful, interactive elements within a dashboard. There are three types of actions, highlight, filter, or URL. Actions on dashboards have several parts. Highlight and filter actions have a source and target. URL actions can include field values as dynamic inputs. An action can be activated by various mouse behaviors, such as hovering or clicking, or as a menu option in the tooltip. Highlighting calls attention to marks by dimming everything that isn't selected. Highlighting can be done in the view or from a legend. Let's add a highlight action to this dashboard. Most simply, this highlight pen icon turns on highlighting from the legend. Now clicking on a category will highlight all marks for that category but we can create a highlight action with different behavior. Click on the Dashboard menu, then Actions. We can see that generated highlight action from the legend, and we can add our own. Add Action, Highlight. First, we'll give it a name, Market Highlight. For Source Sheets, we can select a dashboard from the dropdown. It's already correct. We'll leave all the sheets as Source, 
so we can drive this action from any view. For target sheets, we'll deselect map. This means the map won't highlight. For target highlighting, we'll choose Selected Fields and check Mark It. We'll change the Run action to Hover. The default is Select, which is a mouse click. Now when we hover over any mark, all marks in the bottom charts that share the same market will be highlighted. Interactive filters can be applied to all or some views using the related data sources. And views can be turned into filters by clicking on the icon in the header. But for more control, we can use formal filter actions. Dashboard menu, actions, add action, filter. We'll name it filter to just this country. For source sheets, we'll select only the map. And for target sheets, we'll deselect the map but leave the other two. And we'll leave target filters on all fields. It's important to choose what clearing the selection will do. We'll pick Show All Values. This is usually the expected behavior for the end user. This time, we'll leave the Run On action as Menu and click OK. Now when we click on a country in the map, we have the option in the tooltip to filter the bottom two views. Because we deselected the map as a target, the map doesn't filter itself. And note that our highlight actions still work. URL actions create a hyperlink to a web page or a file outside of Tableau. Field values can be used as dynamic inputs in a URL so the link is related to the data. Let's add a URL action. We'll go to the Dashboard menu, Actions, and we'll add a URL. Speaking of using fields as dynamic inputs, this can be done when naming actions as well. We'll name this URL action Wikipedia 4, and then we'll click the arrow for a list of available fields, and we'll use City. For source sheets, we want the URL to run from the map, so we'll deselect New Zealand sales. We'll leave the Run action as Menu, and the URL will be the selected city's Wikipedia page. Earlier, I opened a page for a random city and copied the format of the link. Then we'll add the city as a dynamic input, just like with the name. Depending on which city we select on the map, that name will be fed into the URL. We can test the link here. Note that it opens in our browser. Now when we click on a city in the map, the tooltip offers a link for Wikipedia for whatever the city is. If we click on it, note that the URL action, instead of opening in the browser, opened in the web page at the bottom of the dashboard. If there is a web page on the dashboard, the URL action opens there. If there isn't a web page in the dashboard, the URL action will open in the default browser, like it did when we tested the link. This web page is still fully interactive, and if it ever lands on a page needing disambiguation, the user can interact with the page as if it were in the browser. Dashboard extensions add custom capabilities directly into Tableau workbooks. Extensions are built by Tableau and partners using the Extension API. Finished extensions that can be used in workbooks can be found in the Extensions Gallery. Once we've identified the extension we want to use, we need to download the extension file .trex, and save it locally. The recommended location is in the Extensions folder in the My Tableau repository. I've downloaded the Data Driven Parameters extension. Let's add the Data Driven Parameters extension. In this workbook, we have a dashboard that shows employees' favorite restaurants. We have a parameter that lets us select employees and visually indicate their chosen restaurant. As we hire new people and add their information to the data set, we want the parameter to update so they can be represented on the dashboard. Note that there is currently no employee number 8. 
Here we have our dashboard built out with the map already on it. Note that extensions can only understand content on the dashboard, so we need to make sure we have the relevant sheets in use on the dashboard before we try to add and configure the extension. To use the extension, first we'll bring out the extension object to the dashboard. I'll make it float. We're prompted to choose an extension. We can visit the gallery or navigate to a local saved T-Rex file. Some extensions may require permissions. Click Allow. What we're prompted for with any given extension varies based on the extension itself. In this case, we're asked to configure the data-driven parameter. First, we can choose the appropriate parameter. Next, select the relevant worksheet, then the field in question. If we needed to change, we could simply use the dropdown, but the defaults are correct. We could change the background or text color if we choose, or start over. I'll resize the new parameter and get rid of the old one. In the underlying data, we'll add a new employee. Save the data, and back in Tableau, we'll refresh the data. Now when we try 008 in the parameter, our map updates with a brand new mark. We didn't need to manually add that employee to the parameter, the extension did it for us. To modify an extension in use in a dashboard, simply click to bring up the arrow for the context menu. From here, we can go back to the configuration dialog, reset the permissions, learn more about the extension, etc. As a server or site admin, extensions can be managed for your Tableau site by going to the Settings tab and choosing Extensions. We can allow, or not, extensions to be run, as well as block or allow specific extensions, and setting the default behavior for unknown extensions. For more information, check out the online help. If you're interested in making your own extensions, check out the API on Tableau's GitHub page. In today's technology landscape, it cannot be assumed that a dashboard will only be consumed on a standard computer. The device designer feature in Tableau takes a master dashboard and lets you preview, and more importantly customize, what that dashboard would look like on a desktop, tablet, or phone. When we're working with a dashboard, the side pane shows a size and any sheets available to use in the dashboard, as well as dashboard objects. Right now, we're working on the default dashboard. It's important to know a couple things about the default dashboard. It acts as a template for other device layouts, so they don't have to start from scratch. Only sheets that are put onto the default dashboard will be available for the device-specific layouts. You can remove sheets from a layout, but only what is on the default can be used. When we're satisfied we have everything on the default that we might want, it's time to add a device layout. Click Device Preview to bring up the Device Preview bar. There's the device type with options including tablet, phone, default layout, and desktop laptop. Depending on what device is selected, the model has a list of common models and their dimensions. Note that the models are intended only as a guideline. There's also the option for screen orientation. Usually, Tablets are landscape, and phones are portrait. Finally, clicking Add Layout adds a layout for the selected device type. When a layout has been added, the first decision is size. Default keeps the size from the default dashboard. Fit All fits all the dimensions, like automatic sizing on the default. Fit Width fits the dashboard horizontally, but allows a hard-coded height. This means the user would scroll vertically to consume the entire dashboard. We can see the device frame, which depends on the model chosen, to see what content is clipped. 
A best practice is to have a peak at the bottom of the screen, indicating that there is more content to be seen by scrolling. We'll leave it on Fit All for now. Next, we can control the layout of the elements on the dashboard. The initial layout is based on the default. If we click Custom, we can edit the device layout directly. Note that the menu for the color legend here has an option, Remove from Tablet. Changes we make on this layout don't impact the default or other device layouts. We only see the content that is on the default dashboard. None of the other sheets in the workbook are available. What about if we wanted to add monthly profit trends? To access more vizs from the tablet layout, we need to add them to the default first. Clicking back on default at the top brings us to the master layout. We can now bring out monthly profit trends. And if we go back to tablet, we see that that sheet is available on the side pane. It was not automatically added to the layout because we've already started customizing. Clicking default reverts all changes and resyncs this tablet layout with the default layout. Now we can see how the default is essentially a template. We got the trends viz added, but we lost what we did with our color legend. Let's undo that and simply drag out monthly profit trends. We can change how our filter is displayed. And let's make our map a bit bigger. OK, this seems to be about what we want. Let's see how it looks on other types of tablets. Clicking through the model shows us the preview for various tablets. Do note that model device frames are estimates. And additionally, the device preview may not account for the app, Chrome, or toolbars, so make sure to allow for that space. Final visuals may be different once the dashboard is published and viewed on that device, so it's always good to check the published dashboard on relevant devices. We're happy with our tablet layout, but we know people will want this dashboard on phones too. To add another layout, select the device type we want, here we'll pick Phone, and then click Add Layout. We now see Phone under the default layouts at the top. We'll set the size to Fit Width and click Custom so we can edit. We'll remove the trend lines and maybe move the map down to the bottom and adjust the size. Now we have a version of this dashboard that will work well on a phone. Note that the default layout is the one that will be served up for any device that does not have a specified layout. Story points let you create compelling, interactive, data-driven stories. Stories consist of specific views or dashboards in sequential progression. For example, letting the audience walk through a discovery you made as you were analyzing data. Let's see what that means. This workbook already has several visualizations and a dashboard built out. Story points allow us to present them to communicate the insight we want to share. To create a new story, click the Story tab at the bottom. We can size the story so it best fits our dimensions. Just like when building a dashboard, our previously created pieces of content are arranged here on the left. Let's click and drag the first sheet out into the canvas. We can give this point a caption by clicking in the navigator box. If the caption ever doesn't fit, we can always adjust the size of the navigator. If we prefer to use simple numbers or dots instead of a caption, click the Layout tab in the left-hand pane and there, we can choose between captions, numbers, and dots. This visualization is still fully interactive. And we can even click through the filter. Did you notice that when we changed the state of the viz by filtering, a toolbar appeared above the navigator? A major benefit of story points is the ability to preserve a specific state of a given visualization things like filtering or highlighting. Clicking the Update icon preserves our modifications for this point, essentially taking a snapshot of the filter selection we made. Alternatively, we could revert by clicking the Undo icon. 
When a change to a point is made, we're also presented with the option to save as a new point. It's the same underlying visualization, but with that filter selection saved as the default. Let's expand our story. To keep track of what sheets have already been used, this blue check indicates that the viz has already been added to the story. There are a lot of ways to add additional points. Let's go through some of the options. First, we can click the blank button, then drag out the content we want. If we want to call out something specific, such as the cost of critical orders, we can highlight it and update the point. Double-clicking a piece of content also brings it out into the story. As a note, if we ever bring out the wrong thing, simply dragging out a different sheet will replace it. Hovering over a navigator item also brings up the delete button. To bring out a sheet to a specific position, we could drag it to the navigator until we see the blue arrows, like so. Remember, if we make a change on a specific point, such as filtering or highlighting, we can use the toolbar to save as a new point. If we want to display more than one visualization on a single point, we have to bring them out as a dashboard. What happens when we bring out a dashboard? Here, because we changed the default size of our story, the dashboard doesn't look good when it's nested. To easily fix the sizing, we'll go to the underlying dashboard by clicking on the Go to Sheet icon here, and then we'll set its size to Fit to Story. Now back on the story, it fits perfectly, though we may need to adjust the color legend. Similarly, if it's a visualization that doesn't fit well in the story, we can go back to the sheet by clicking on the icon and changing the fit. Entire view generally works pretty well. It's worth noting that most changes to an original sheet are reflected in the story point, and changes in how a viz displays needs to be made on the underlying sheet itself. Here, we can hide the color legend and only keep some of the data. Back on the story, we see that the color legend is gone and we're only looking at that selection of data. Now that we have our basic points, what if we want the audience to know that they can interact with this map? To annotate the story, we'll simply add a description by dragging it out. This is a fully editable text box. The default background color is yellow, but that can be changed by going to the Story menu, selecting Format, and here we can control various aspects of the story's formatting. Things like default shading, aspects of the title, and we can control the navigator and the text box. Thank you for watching this Getting Started with Dashboards and Stories training video.